Can you tell us a little bit about uh, Otis Redding? I minimize Otis Redding, who was somebody who was bigger than life, basically. Yeah. And he still is. He, you know, after his passing, I think he got bigger. And um, a lot of people don't know how young he was. Right. When he passed away, he was only 26. That's pretty, pretty young, about today's standards, anyway. So it is what it is. And uh, he just seemed like older. He was, uh, I say, streetwise. He was just a very wise guy. And he was a big guy. So he looked a little older than he actually was most of the time was able to do that. And uh, he was just a super, super guy, great friend and a good buddy. And uh, to regress a little bit, Belushi also was. He never refused to fan an autograph and Otis didn't either. And the thing about Otis, I think Alan Walden put it best. He said he had a million dollar smile. You could be a hundred yards away. And if you was walking up to him, he'd be your new best friend the minute you got up there. Or before you started walking, he was your new best friend. And as just smiled, as he just encouraged you to come on, come on. You know, who knows who you are, and that's the way he was. He never knew. I don't think he knew how big he was, how great he was. He, he just didn't know that. So <laughs> I'm not going to tell him if you will tell him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, you know, what direction do you think he would have gone in had he, had he been here? You know, I don't know, and uh, that question gets asked, what would he be doing today? I have no idea. Probably still performing Dock of the Bay. Right. But what would have gone that way? I don't know. It was the first song that we actually did was in that kind of medium tempo. And and we kind of knew before it was released that was our new crossover record. And we needed to cross him over. We needed to get him a little bit more pop radio play. Right. And he was being played like crazy on the ethnic stations, on the R&B stations. But he was not being played on the pop stations. Now, they didn't have pop and ethnic stations uh, in Europe, so he got played a lot in Europe. He was much bigger over there than he was oh, over yeah. here. And we needed to break him over here, and that Dock of the Bay did it. Whether he'd have gone that way or not, I have no idea. I don't know. As a producer, I would have probably steered him in that direction, but I'm not sure he would have said yes. We'd have to see. It depends on the material, I guess. <laughs> so I don't think there was anything after Dock of the Bay that anybody sent me that... Uh, that maybe didn't know that he was uh, had passed away, that I actually lost or turned down, or you know, I, I don't remember any songs. So right. there was some. That was a biggie. 